Welcome, welcome. My name's Ken Valgertson. Um, some of you, some of you are brand new to this, and I'd like to welcome you. Um, Australia, Britain. I can't believe how um, I started this uh, for all of you people that are self-isolating, and thank you for self-isolating. Uh, and parents were going nuts. I wanted stuff to do, and I remembered that I loved giving Shel Silverstein poems and reading them to my students. And, and I thought, well, they all have kids, so the 42 people that will probably listen, I can read it to them. Well, this thing went viral. Now, I know viral is not the right term to use, but it explains it. Because I had 42 people to listen to it who shared, and each of them shared, and another 100 people got it. And they shared, and another 100 people got it. And now I'm in the thousands, which I never thought would ever happen. So all you brand new people, welcome. Um, I'm known as Ken Valgerton. Uh, I have some people on here that know me as Uncle Ken. Um, a lot of you know me as Mr. V for 35 years of teaching you. And uh, some of the comedians and then people in the comedy world know me as, as, you know, Kenny V. So I have an assignment with every one of my lessons. and I'm gonna give you the assignment first. I'm gonna read you a whole bunch of Shel Silverstein poems today. One of them became a very big hit. Now, he has a lot of songs that became hits, like Johnny Cash, Boy Named Sue, every Dr. Hook song. There is, if you check and look it up, there's some that are not, not appropriate for the kids. So I'm gonna tell you it's the Irish Rovers. And I want you to find that. I want you to play it, start listening to it, drive everybody crazy, and make actions for the, the chorus. And, and you'll figure out there's a chorus in there there was actions if you probably really look on the internet because there was a pub in Vancouver where they always played and everybody did actions so that's gonna be your assignment today and uh, I have another assignment at the end because of my first episode I ended with a terms that that probably made you wonder what I was talking about so let's get this started let's and I and, and all of you people that are, are they, they do the little I can't read it I'm on my cell phone and, and I'm out here in the backyard in Camrose. For those of you in Australia, plus 35. It's minus six with a wind chill here, but that's okay. Self-isolating, I got a yard and I got my dog. First one, the first poem, every kid that I taught grade one to learnt this poem and they can probably still say it today. Boa Constrictor. I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor, a boa constrictor, a boa constrictor. I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor and I don't like it one bit. Well, what do you know? He's nibbling on my toe. Oh gee, he's up to my knee. Oh my, he's up to my thigh. Oh fiddle, he's up to my middle. Oh heck, he's up to my neck. Oh dread, he's up to me. <coughs> Okay, that should scare the kids, but this one's for the Fleck family. They, they told me they wanted this one. It's called Sick, and it's what a lot of kids do. Get up in the morning and they don't want to go to school. And after a week of isolation, a lot of you want to go to school, but this is going to be your school for a while. Sick. Uh, I cannot go to school today said little Peggy Ann McKay. I have the meebles, measles and the mumps. A gash, a rash and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry. I think I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks. I've counted 16 chicken pox. Oh, there's one more, that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue. I think I have the instamatic flu. I cough, I sneeze, I gas, I choke. I think my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin. My belly button's caving in. My back is wrenched, my ankle sprained. My appendix pains like every time it rains. My nose is cold, my toes are numb. I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff, my voice is weak. I hardly whisper when I speak. My tongue is filling up my mouth. I think my hair is falling out. Yep, it is. My elbow's bent, my spine ain't straight. My temperature is 108. 
My brain is shrunk. I cannot hear. I have a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail, and my heart is... <laughs> what? What's, what's that? What's that you say? Oh, today is Saturday? <laughs> okay, goodbye. I'm going out to play. E uh, this one, I'll actually show you the picture. Because everybody's all... This, this is one of everybody's favorites. The crocodile's toothache. The crocodile went to the dentist and sat down in the chair. And the dentist said, Now tell me, sir, why does it hurt and where? And the crocodile said, I'll tell you the truth. I have a terrible ache in my tooth. And he opened his jaws so wide, so wide, that the dentist climbed right inside and the dentist laughed oh isn't this fun and he pulled teeth out one by one and the crocodile cried you're hurting me so please put down your pliers and let me go but the dentist laughed with a ho ho ho, ho. and he said i still have 12 to go oops wrong one i confess but what's one crocodile's tooth more or less then suddenly the jaws went snap and the dentist was gone, right off the map. And where he went, one could only guess. To the north, to the south, to the east, or the west, he left no forwarding address. But what's one dentist, more or less? <laughs> yes, sirree. Oh, here comes the ball. Rocky's keeping me busy here. Yeah, Rocky. His ball is a basketball. Regular dogs have small. This one's called the unicorn. Probably a lot of parents will be saying, you're saying it wrong. A long time ago, when the earth was green, there was more kind of animals than you've ever seen. They run around free when the earth was being born. And the loveliest of them all was the unicorn. They had green alligators and long-necked geese, <coughs> some humpy bumpy camels, and some chimpanzees, some crack cats and rats and elephants. But sure as you're born, the loveliest of them all was the unicorn. But the Lord seed some sinning, and it caused him pain. And he says, stand back, I'm going to make it rain. He says, hey, brother Noah, I'll tell you what you do. You're going to build me a floating zoo. And you're going to take two alligators and a couple of geese, two humpy bumpy camels, and two chimpanzees, two cats and rats and elephants, and sure as you're born, Noah, don't forget my unicorn. Now Noah was there and answered the call. He finished up the ark as the rain started to fall. He marched the animals in two by two, and he called out as they went through. He said, hey, Lord, I got your two alligators and your couple of geese, your humpy bumpy camels, and your two chimpanzees. Got your cats and rats and elephants. But, Lord, I'm so forlorn, because I don't see no unicorn. Oh, Noah looked out through the driving rain, but the unicorns were hiding, playing silly games. They were kicking and splashing in the misty morn. Oh, those silly unicorn. Then the goat started goating, and the snake started snaking, and the elephant started elephanting, and the boat started shaking. The mouse started squealing, and the lion started roaring. Everybody's on board but the unicorn. I mean, there was green alligators and long neck geese, some humpy bumpy camels, and some chimpanzees. And Noah cried out, close the door, because the rain's a pouring. We just can't wait for the unicorn. And the ark started moving, and it drifted in the tide. And the unicorns looked up from the rocks and they cried. And the water came up and sort of floated them away. That's why you'll never see a unicorn to this very day. But you're gonna see alligators and a whole mess of geese, some humpy bumpy camels and some chimpanzees. You'll see cats and rats and elephants, but sure as you're born, you're never going to see no unicorn. Okay, I'll try not to be so sad. All the sad bones.
with his mouth full of food. Milford Dupree, though he knew it was rude, talked with his mouth full of food. He never would burp or walk out in the nude, but he talked with his mouth full of food. His mother said, Milford, it's crude and it's lewd to talk with your mouth full of food. Why, even a milk cow who mooed as she chewed never mooed with her mouth full of food. And the cuckoo who never ever cuckooed a cooed with his mouth full of food. His dad said, get married or get tattooed, but don't talk with your mouth full of food. If it was a crime, you surely would get sued if you talked with your mouth full of food. Why, just like that, an animal should be zooed as you talk with your mouth full of food. When you talk with your mouth full of food, he pleaded and begged, and he giggled and chewed, and laughed with his mouth full of food. And all they advised him, they simply poop pooed He poop pooed with his mouth full of food. They sent the gluer to glue his mouth shut, and he got his mouth glued. Because he talked with his mouth full of food. Now instead of good morning, he says, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was the garbage truck going by. Because I have my production crew here. Uh, the cameraman and the light man. And okay, isolation. And that's why Rocky was barking. And there was all that noise. Because this is live. Or you might be watching it on YouTube later. Okay, let's go to another one. A few more here. <laughs> Matthew reads this one to his kids all the time and wants me to read it. Backward Bill. Backward Bill. Backward Bill lives way up on Backward Hill, which is really a hole in the sandy ground because that's a hill turned upside down. Backward Bill's got a backward shack with a big front porch built out back. You walk through the window and look out the door, and the cellar is way up on the very top floor. Backward Bill rides like the wind, don't know where he's going, but sees where he's been. His spurs go nay, and his horse goes clang, his six gun goes nab. It never goes bang. This nab is bang backwards. Okay, comedy is not always easy. Backward Bill's got a backward pup. They eat their supper when the sun comes up. He's got a backward n wife named Backward Lil. She's my own true hate, says Backward Bill. Backward Bill wears his hat on his toes. He puts his underwear over his clothes. He comes every payday and he pays his boss. He rides off smiling, carrying his hoss, horse. Bill word back, Bill word back. Beep bop, be the little bop, bop, bop. There's Bill, there he is. He's got his hat and everything. I'm breaking my rules and showing pictures. Squishy touch. This is about kind of King Midas. You might have to look up or hear about King Midas. Everything King Midas touched turned to gold, the lucky fellow. Every single thing I touch turns to raspberry jello. Today I touched the kitchen wall. I went and punched my brother Paul. I tried to fix my bike last week and kiss my mother on the cheek. I got into my overshoes. I tried to read the evening news. I sat down in my evening nice easy chair. I tried to comb my wavy hair. I took a dive into the sea. Would you like to shake hands with me? <laughs> One more. We have social isolation. This poem could never happen. It's called Crowded Tub. There's too many kids in this tub. There's too many elbows to scrub. I just washed a behind that I'm sure wasn't even mine. There's too many kids in this tub. Well, thank you guys for coming. Yeah, Rocky, you, you got the garbage man and then and, and you would chase them and there's squirrels. Where's the squirrels? And that gets rid of them. Okay. 
So, your first one, one of those is an Irish Rover song. Find it for the kids. You'll have to find it because there's other ones. And uh, I want them to start making up. There's a chorus that keeps coming up that probably has a bunch of different things that you could do for it. My first show, it's funny I'm calling these shows. <laughs> I'm a kid's entertainer. I ended with Twas Brillig and the Slithy Toves. And nobody kind of went, what the heck are you saying? Well, I just said it there. That's not a Shel Silverstein poem, but that's another very great poem. So I want you to look it up. Twas Brillig and the Slithy Toves is the first line. And uh, figure that all out. And tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be a science lesson um, on flatulence, uh, poofing. And I'm going to explain the science behind it because every kid wants to know. Uh, Wednesday, I'm, I'm going to show a kid's book that uh, Whitney and I wrote. And the unfinished one without any illustrations. And we're going to go through all of that one. And I think we're going to start doing Bernoulli's Principle and paper airplanes and maybe some weather. I don't know, but uh, it keeps me busy. Thank you for watching. And it was really again a slidey toves. Bye-bye.